After pulling 100 Global Force Wrestling fans, here are the top seven wrestlers that GFW needs to push now. This is BQ, and I do this for the Global Force Wrestling fans. Uh, but, yeah. but you look great, man. I think you've lost some weight since the last time yes, I saw you. Yes. Huh? So yes, we're going to be talking the top seven stars that Global Force Wrestling needs to push now. These are the results of a survey of 100 Global Force Wrestling fans. So some of you listening may not agree with everything being said and everything that's on the list, but they are the results of the survey. I want you guys to listen to the entire thing because there is going to be an honorable mention at the very end. So after I give you number one, there is going to be an honorable mention. Attention! But let's get it crack in number seven, Braxton Sutter, my favorite. Braxton was one of the most slept on parts of the storyline when they were doing the wedding angle with Laurel Van Ness. He showed a great deal of confidence speaking and was a pretty important cog in the story. His in-ring work has been very solid, and now they're teasing a heel turn, and I truly feel that given his charisma and confidence, that a heel turn could make him one of the more popular wrestlers on the roster by the middle of 2018. Number six, we're talking Braxton, so now we gotta talk Ali, my favorite knockout. Ali has organically become arguably the most over knockout on the roster. Now, after a slow burn in 2016, we are finally getting a version of Ali who can compete in the ring. People have clamored for a cherry bomb type character, but I fully 100% believe that that would have been too bland for television and that this character has gotten over more than it would if she was just a normal wrestler. She, has ha she hasn't had much TV time since new management took over, but with her current inclusion with Rosemary and Gail Kim, this can only mean good things going forward for Allie. Number five, Moose. Moose has been one of the more committed wrestlers to the company, and after a lengthy title reign with the Grand Championship, where he defended it all over the world, Moose appears poised for a main event push and could finally find himself in the global title scene by Slammiversary, maybe sooner. But Moose appears to be having a lot of fun with the company and is currently entering a storyline with Lashley. Number four, Marche Rocket. I'm also a Marche guy. You can't tell me that GFW Creative can't find something for a guy of his size and talent. We haven't seen Marche on TV since he was booked in a pretty disappointing Grand Championship match with Moose. A lot of us fans were very let down that he wasn't given the opportunity to show what he could do in that match. And I think it was a missed opportunity to not turn him babyface following the match when Moose attacked was attacked by Eli Drake and Chris Adonis. Now, Marche hasn't been at the last set of tapings. As a matter of fact, he hasn't been at the last couple sets. And he's told me that he is dying to get back in there. He's mainly been featured on Explosion and One Night Only. But I have to believe there is something they can do with Marche Rocket. Number three, Trevor Lee. I'm not going to lie. I'm not super familiar with much of his indie work. Where it's said that he shows a lot more in-ring ability than what he shows on Impact. And in retrospect... We, we have seen how much being associated with Shane Helm, Helms and the Helms dynasty last year held him back because now he's showing a great deal more charisma and his mic work has been top notch. And after an entertaining angle with Sanjay Dutt where he kept stealing the title and he was able to do it in a comedic fashion without being cheesy, he is the current X Division champion, three-time champion, and has aligned himself with Caleb Conley. Number two, Laurel Van Ness. Personally, I'm a big fan of the bride gimmick, and I think if they made it a bit darker, less comedy, it could evolve even more. After being quote-unquote changed by Grado, she has snapped again after Grado called off the wedding upon finding out she was Canadian. She still has, been, still has aligned herself with Sienna, for the most part, as Congo Kong as well, and has had a pretty solid win-loss record despite the drunken gimmick. I'd like to see her move away from the curb stop finisher because it's a bit sloppy, but LVN is awesome, and this gimmick has been great for television. Much better than the spoiled daddy's girl. Once she comes, becomes normal for good, I think she's a great option to become Knockout's champion. Number one, and don't forget, we got an honorable mention come after this. Number one, Eli Drake. He is the current global champion and they are giving him the ball to run with. In his own words now, 
Eli Drake is a homegrown GFW talent, and he stated that he's committed to helping this company grow despite receiving other offers. Drake was on the losing end of a lot of matches in 2016 and 2017 while aligning himself with guys like Jesse Goddard, Tyrus, and Chris Adonis. After Alberto El Patron was stripped of the gold, Eli Drake won the gauntlet for gold despite being assigned number two. It is in GFW's best interest to give him a lengthy title run, and he is the perfect candidate to break Bobby Roode's record title reign. Now, I promised a honorable mention, and the honorable mention... Kingston. Kingston came into the scene with DCC along with James Storm and Bram. Unfortunately, the DCC was booked terribly after breaking up with Storm, and the company missed an opportunity to feud him with the Cowboy and instead took him off TV almost completely. The only time we've seen him since is in the Gauntlet for Gold, which I think was a good sign that he may have a place in the company. We just don't know what that place is going to be until probably 2018. Hopefully they figure out because he hasn't had his fair shot yet. But there you go, guys. That is it. Those are the top seven, actually top eight wrestlers that Global Force Wrestling should be pushing now. Please hit the subscribe button if it's your first time here with the channel. We are talking GFW just about each and every day. Reviewing impact, discussion questions, vlogs, breaking news. It's the number one channel for the Global Force Wrestling fan. So please hit that subscribe button. Give a thumbs up. And again, guys, in the comments, I want to know what you guys think, who you think needs to be pushed. And what do you think about this list? This was voted on by GFW fans, but I know not everyone's going to agree with everything. So I want to know your thoughts in the comments. This is BQ. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.